Hello guys, uh, as I spoke about in my diff build video last week, I'm here today with my uh, diff check tool that I spoke a little bit about and um, why, why do I have this tool? Uh, it's a tool that came onto the market last year, uh, it's brought to us by our, our friends at Monaco RC and it's a very powerful tool which we haven't really seen before and uh, it's useful for the fact that Finally, we can uh, measure the, the actual hardness of the diff uh, with a number and not only by feel. So it's uh, very useful not only to measure the hardness, but also to, to compare different diffs. Like compare two diffs if you're not sure which one is the harder one. And with this tool, it's very easy to do so because you have a number on it. And it's something we haven't really had before. So what I want to do in this video as well is try to answer some of the questions that uh, a lot of people had about this device which uh, some people had doubts about how it works and general questions I'll try to answer those and of course I'll also try to show you uh, how it works and how do we utilize this tool in our team so the first question that we'll try to answer is why does the diff check have a number on the resistance even though nothing is connected to it so to answer this first of all we need to say that uh, the diff check is basically not only a diff check device, it's a, it's a resistance check device. So the resistance uh, you see on, on the output is, is something you can use for many different things. I mean, not only to check the diff, but also to check the resistance of the car itself and several other, other things which I will explain to you later. But also for the latest batch of the diff check, the, the resting value, so to speak, it changed a bit, but this doesn't mean that the product doesn't work. It only means that some of the components inside of the product changed. And you will have to change your uh, reference number for, uh, for your work. So the question is then, is it possible to set this parameter to zero? Um, it's not possible because of the way the components are set, in which way they are so delicate to measure many different things, and to do so uh, you would have to remove the sensibility of the diff check device. And also you need to, to understand that the value that the device shows is the same regardless of the input voltage. So it doesn't matter what kind of power supply or such that you're using, um, it will not affect the, the value. So actually I'm running mine of a 7.4 volt battery pack and that works just fine. It's very uh, convenient to use in your pit. You don't have to hook it up to your power supply. <clears throat> so then when you when you start to work with the diff check, you'll ask yourself, um, why does the resistance go lower after a while? Like if, you, if you let it run for a while, you'll see that the value drops. And there's two reasons for this. The first reason is that uh, one of the components uh, is lubricated by grease. And when the grease stays without movement, without, without being used for a while, it becomes sticky. So then you would have to, not to break in, but you'd have to warm up the device to make the, um, the lubrification free. And so that it won't affect your, your measurement. So what you do is just let it run for about a minute or so until it becomes consistent. And the second reason for the resistance uh, going lower after a while is temperature. So how can you use the diff check as precisely as possible? Uh, you need to, to make your own references for, for the numbers. So this first of all is related to ambient temperature like I just explained. It, it's related to the, the temperature in the room or the temperature outside if you're outside. And yeah, you need to write these down so that you know what you're working with. So for instance, as I spoke about earlier, I'm gonna I'm gonna warm this up for a while until the value becomes consistent before I start to work. And I'm gonna show you an example on how to, to measure two different dips. This is actually pretty consistent already, so it's actually close to, to where I want it to be before I start to work. So I got two dips right here, this is a 6000 dip for my T4 and this is a 7000 and between these dips 
you will clearly be able to see the difference. Just connect it to the output. So there's a, a high 1200, a middle to a high 1200 first, and then when it becomes warmer, obviously it drops because the oil inside of the diff warms up. But we want to compare it with a 7000. The value is instantly a bit higher to show that the viscosity of the oil is, is heavier in this case. I mean, you can even compare two dips with 6000 and you you may just get a, a small difference in the value, but it will be very helpful for you on the track to try to determine which direction to go with your setup. And this is how we use this tool. And the tool has several other uses as well. Um, we've seen lately um, because of different adapters, like this adapter for, uh, for 112. I've been connected to, to the rear axle of my 112. And I can check the, the, the gear diff or the ball diff hardness on my 112 car very easily and quickly. And there's also an adapter available for the 7mm nuts of my touring car. So you don't even have to remove the diff from the car. You simply connect the, the adapter to the touring car wheel and you can check the hardness of the diff with the car sitting in the pit. And you can even compare it between different cars. So much easier to work with you uh, being in a team and trying to compare setups between different guys in the team. And this is really helpful for our team right now. And I'm sure that like every every type of racer will find this uh, useful, even for hobby level, not only for a pro level. So I hope that you liked this video and it cleared up some some of the questions that we had. And yeah, if you have any other questions, feel free to, to message me or, or write a comment and I'll try to answer.